Okay, welcome to the Before Slavery Museum webinar series. And we are so excited today to have a special guest, Dr. Emanuela Trevisan. Um, just a little bit about um, Before Slavery and then I'll introduce you to our guest. Before Slavery is a new museum coming to the Metro Atlanta area this year in October. The focus of the museum is to highlight the ancient past of the people who were brought to this country on slave ships. It's an interactive and an exciting way to view the cultures that African Americans come from. We have found that the continent of Africa has a lot deeper past than we commonly believe or have been taught. That's why we're so excited to welcome today's guest, Dr. Emanuela Trevisan. Dr. Travisan is a researcher in Judaism and Jewish communities, a professor at the University of uh, Capuscari, I hope I said that close, uh, in Venice. <laughs> she has committed many years to getting to know some of the communities in Africa who connect to their ancient Israelite past. Uh, Dr. Travisan was born in Venice and graduated from the University of Capuscari uh, in Oriental Languages and Civilizations. In 1971, she began serving as the lecturer at the university. In 2001, she was appointed professor of modern Jew Jewish studies at the Institute. She served as a guest lecturer in several, uh, at several uni uh, universities and institutions, the National Institute of Languages and Oriental Civilization in Paris, the School of Oriental and African Studies in London, uh, University of London, also the University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee, uh, the Autonomous University of Madrid, and the University of Oxford in 2002. She was a visiting lecturer at uh, Bar Ilan University. In 91, she was elected the president of the International Society for the Study of Ethiopian Jewry and has since been the vice president of that association since 2004. She's written several books. Um, the one she's going to talk about today is her book on the Falashas. It's called uh, Beta Israel in Ethiopia and um, Israel Studies on the Ethio Ethiopian Jews. So welcome, Dr. Trey. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I lost my screen here. It went away from me. Welcome, Dr. Trevisan. We're happy to have you. Please Thank tell you. us a little about yourself. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me. It's really a, a pleasure to meet you and your, the friends of your uh, association and um, I wish uh, the best to your new museum. Mm -hmm. So, and maybe one day I, <laughs> I when, with a COVID, uh, when we be COVID free, <laughs> mm -hmm. I will come and see. That would be beautiful. That would be wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So, Tell us a uh, little bit about yourself, and then I'll ask just a few questions, and uh, one quick question, and we'll go into the your presentation. Yes. Uh, yes. I think um, you are uh, interested about uh, uh, my own experience, uh, how I was interested in, uh, in the Bet Israel or Falashas after I will explain about uh, the different names. But um, I think, uh, uh, yes, this um, uh, could be of some, of some interest to, to share with you uh, how, I, uh, how I, I was interested in this group. And um, it was somewhat by chance. Um, as many times uh, happen when you do uh, research. Um, because in the early uh, 80s, uh, I was uh, known as a specialist of Karait studies. Karait, um, Karait is a Jewish group, it's a Jewish movement, a sect movement. Um, 
um, let, uh, refused uh, the Talmud. So refused the, the book of Talmud, the oral law, the interpretation of the Bible through the oral law. So um, they refused um, this uh, tradition and they followed um, the Bible. Uh, so the practice is uh, the, um, according to what is written in the Bible without uh, the oral interpretation. Because uh, in Judaism, you have the oral interpretation as a book of Talmud. And um, it means uh, uh, that uh, you, um, you follow the rules of the Bible, but through this interpretation. And Karaites didn't follow this, uh, this way. Um, and um, when uh, the, uh, first, uh, uh, the first group of uh, Ethiopian Jews uh, started to arrive, at the beginning it was a top secret operation in Israel in the 84 and they uh, started to arrive and I was asked to uh, come to Israel to make an inquiry to, um, to uh, check if they were Karaites because um, there were many uh, studies and researches um, and because uh, of their way uh, to follow the Bible um, some people thought maybe uh, they are Karaites. So I was asked as a specialist of Karaites to go to Israel and check and make an inquiry. Uh, why? Because uh, the uh, Jews of Ethiopia um, didn't know, they didn't refuse the Talmud, simply they didn't know about the existence of Talmud. So um, they followed the Bible um, according to what is written in the Bible. And uh, sure, there were many similarities with Karaites, because if you follow the Bible as it's written, uh, it's sure that you share uh, some, uh, some similarities. Um, so I started my research. I concluded that there were no, no link uh, with Karaites, but it was the start of my research. And I was uh, uh, absolutely fascinated by the people I met. I was in the south of Israel, in Ashkelon, uh, and uh, uh, I was uh, absolutely fascinated by the people I, I met. And um, when I was in Israel, um, uh, uh, some, uh, there was a, a colleague that mentioned that in Italy um, uh, there was a family uh, that maybe uh, they um, kept an important archive. Uh, the family of an Italian Jew, Carlo Alberto Viterbo, I will uh, speak, uh, a little bit, I will mention him uh, during my talk, after um, uh, Carlo Alberto di Terbo, uh, he, was, uh, he went to Ethiopia when Italy conquered uh, and uh, um, conquered Ethiopia. And he was sent as representative of the Jews of Italy. Um, so um, when I came back to Italy, I uh, tried, I, uh, I was in uh, touch with the family, with the, it was a son because he, he died, uh, and the son uh, opened me uh, all his archives. Uh, it, it was very important because he uh, kept uh, a lot of um, photos, pictures. Uh, uh, he did very, he was a, also, he liked uh, to take pictures. He had a very special <laughs> uh, machine. So um, I saw, I, I to see the pictures and to have all because he um, filled files and files and notebooks and journals. Um, so they gave me all the material and this was a start. So I found a lot of material, material in Italy, in Florence. And um, after that, I found another important uh, archive in Israel, in Tel Aviv, of Faitlovich. The other, I will uh, speak about him because he's very important in the story of, the, of this group. Uh, so I uh, used the archive in uh, Tel Aviv uh, and I had the possibility to, yes, to, to use freely uh, all uh, the second archive. 
Um, so uh, this is uh, the beginning of, all, of the story. So it was a, a chance, it was by chance, a little bit by chance at the beginning. And after it was, I was very interested because um, this uh, um, was um, uh, also the story of Italy, the story of uh, the colonial period of uh, fascism. And I was very interested in this period. So it gave me the possibility to make inquiries uh, during what happened during, during this period and about the uh, Italian colonialism in Ethiopia. So after I went to Ethiopia two times, um, and uh, so it was also a way to uh, search my own history because it was part uh, uh, Italian uh, colonial uh, period. And in Italy, we, we didn't uh, also, um, until today, we don't speak uh, a lot about uh, the Italian past during colonialism. It's something uh, hidden. So it was very interesting to, to discover um, yeah, sources and, uh, and uh, to make inquiries about this. So yeah, <laughs> this is a little bit uh, the, the story of uh, my beginning. And uh, yes, I, I did the research for uh, many, many years uh, about this. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you. Um, I, I understand that you are a part of an organization called um, Kalanu? No. No, no, I know about it, but I am not part of Kulano. I, I, okay. receive, I receive information from Kulano, but I am not part of Kulano. Kulano is interested in conversions uh, and follow the conversion of, um, of, gr of uh, groups in, uh, in different countries in Africa. Uh, okay. Follow, um, send uh, rabbis, send uh, books, uh, send... Um, and also they send money and uh, follow the process, process of conversion of, uh, of some groups in Africa. But that I am not part of Kulan, of Kulan. That's an important distinction. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. okay. Wow. Yes. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Trevisan will share her presentation. Uh, um, we will be sure that you can share your screen. Uh, okay. Yes, you can, on the Falasha. Okay, so um, my idea um, was to uh, speak about uh, um, a very important figure, uh, Tamrat Emanuel, a very fascinating and intriguing, uh, outstanding um, uh, leader of, the, um, of this group. Um, and uh, I think that through uh, this personality, through uh, Tamrat Emanuel, it's possible to understand uh, also the process um, uh, through, uh, they went through, uh, the, this group went through uh, the same process as uh, Tamrat Emanuel. So it's a sort of an example, um, an interesting, very interesting uh, example um, for also, um, for uh, the whole, uh, whole group. Um, yes, I, um, yeah, here in the middle, you can see uh, Tamrat Emanuel, this uh, man. Uh, he has a musical instrument, Krar. Uh, and this one, uh, this one is my last book, uh, this one um, about him. This is in English. And this one is um, just, uh, I, um, I collected all his letters in Italian because he wrote, uh, he knew very well Italian, we will see why. Um, and he wrote uh, um, many letters in, uh, in Italian. So this is uh, the collection of uh, all his letters. Uh, we are speaking about uh, Ethiopia and especially uh, this area. The area of this one, with the green one, uh, where there were the settlements of Beta Israel, um, of this group, um, around the lake of uh, the Tana Lake, um, in the mountains here. So this is the area where most of the villages um, were, uh, were, yes, were, in Ethiopia. 
um, maybe you you paid attention that I used different uh, words, and I will explain now a little bit about it because it's very important. So, Beta Israel, Falashas, Jews of Ethiopia. Um, there is no evidence for the existence of the term Falasha. Falasha in Amharic means exiled um, prior to 16th century. Uh, but Falashas um, was the common name during the 19th, 19th century and also 20th century. Uh, so they were known especially uh, by this uh, uh, term, Falashas. And also you have um, uh, the, the first books about them mention always the term Falasha. Um, and also, Tamrat, for instance, uh, signed Tamrat the Falasha. But, but today we can't use this term. Why? Uh, when um, the uh, Jews of Ethiopia uh, arrived, immigrated to Israel, uh, they, uh, they didn't want to be called Falasha because they uh, considered this term uh, derog derogatory. And um, it's, uh, uh, yes, we must uh, avoid this term, even if I will use it uh, um, when uh, it's, uh, because it, you can't, uh, you can't uh, um, cancel uh, a term that was commonly, uh, commonly used by the group, by the group in 19th century. Um, the other term, Ayud, I, uh, Ayud uh, is Jew, means Jew. But this was, a, they didn't mention as Ayhud. Ayhud was a term used to identify Christian heretics. Um, and also, uh, also a derogat derogatory term. Uh, but they didn't, this group didn't use the term Ayhud. They didn't consider themselves Ihood, Jews. You can translate the Ihood as Jew. Beta Israel is another term that is confusing because uh, you have Bnei Israel, for instance, that are from India. So uh, Beta Israel, you may confuse with Bnei Israel. It's not very <laughs> different, a little bit, but not so different. Um, and we don't know when this term came uh, to be used. But today is a term uh, mostly used to refer. So it will be the term I will, with, I will use most during this talk because it's, um, the, it's more uh, neutral and uh, is not uh, derogatory at all. Um, so beta Israel maybe is, uh, and also you today you, you can find the books about Beta Israel, for instance, or Jews of Ethiopia, or Jews of Ethiopia, uh, especially when um, the Beta Israel immigrated to Israel, they prefer to be called Jews of Ethiopia. Ethiopian national epic. Uh, According to Kebra Nagast, this is an Ethiopian book, a very important Ethiopian book um, of the uh, for, uh, 14th century, uh, Coptic Ethiopians claim Israelite origins through Menelik. Menelik was the offspring of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. And this is very important because uh, in the Ethiopian context, um, you have um, the, uh, the majority of, Ethiopian, of Ethiopians who consider themselves the descendants of the King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba through Menelik. But Israel claims the same origins, but according to their tradition, the difference is that they didn't cross the Red Sea on uh, during Shabbat, during Saturday, because during Saturday Jews can't uh, um, uh, can't move. Um, so they, um, according to Beth Israel, the difference was just that they didn't cross the Red Sea on Shabbat. Beth Israel, 
I, uh, I know that you are uh, curious about their origins, uh, who are there, how they arrived to Ethiopia. Yes, they consider to be uh, descendants of, um, of uh, King Solomon. So they, uh, they claim to have Israelite origins. Uh, but this, as I told before, uh, is not a difference because those Ethiopians claim the same origin. The problem is that nothing written was passed on by Beta Israel to tell their story. So we don't have books. We don't have something written uh, where it's uh, stated uh, about the origins. Uh, so we have different uh, hypotheses. Uh, and uh, the one, one is what I told you, uh, descendants of King Solomon and Queen of Sheba, or uh, descendants of the lost Hebrew tribe of Dan, one of the 12 tribes, or descendants of a Jewish colony in Upper Egypt, or of Jews from Yemen, Yemen is not for, so far from Ethiopia, or descendants of Christian rebels against the Christian kingdoms in the uh, 16th, 17th century. And uh, this last uh, um, or possible origin is the one that scholars, uh, scholars that uh, did uh, research uh, on the history of Ethiopia, uh, think uh, the, um, the better uh, explanation. Uh, so just re uh, Christians that um, uh, didn't accept uh, the um, Christian kingdoms and, um, and um, decided to follow the Bible um, because uh, in uh, the Ethiopian, uh, Ethiopian church uh, has the same Bible, Bible um, but Israel don't, um, don't have a Hebrew Bible. We, nobody found um, nothing in Hebrew. So they don't have uh, a, a Bible different from Christians, except that they don't have the New Testament. They keep only the Old Testament, but it's the same text as the other uh, Ethiopians, uh, Christian Ethiopians. Um, but uh, we have this, uh, um, yeah, this uh, change uh, in, um, uh, during centuries, and there is this theory uh, about uh, um, the possible origins as just as heretics, as, um, heretics that turn to the Bible, that decided to follow um, strictly, the, strictly the Bible. Anyhow, they were a minority and they, uh, they uh, were living uh, apart. Uh, they, um, most of them had no land, no land, uh, so no agriculture. Um, or they, um, they worked up, um, in uh, the land of uh, the Coptic, of the Copt Christians. Um, and, uh, and they were specialized in some uh, occupation, uh, such as uh, smithing, weaving, pottery, building, soldiering. Uh, they were very uh, well known as masons, very, very good masons. And they were forced, they had uh, forced labor. Uh, as masons so to build, uh, for instance, uh, the uh, important uh, palaces of for the for the emperor, for the emperors, Ethiopian emperors. So, uh, they were victims of prejudice and superstition uh, on the part of the Christian uh, Copts, uh, who connected them with despised professions such as smiths and potters. They were considered uh, wisers. Uh, because they used the fire, and the fire was considered something magic uh, and something dangerous. And they were called Buddha. Buddha uh, is linked, uh, the idea, to e evil eye. So they were accused to transform into hyena or other animals and kill uh, the babies, for instance. 
So um, they were discriminated, uh, and they were like uh, they lived like a sort of casta, a sort of casta, uh, living aside, uh, living uh, um, yes, um, living aside, uh, and yes, um, they because I as I told you before, they followed strictly the Bible, and so the, for instance the purity laws. Um, the purity laws concerning uh, the woman, uh, the when the, the the birth of the child, uh, the circumcision, also respect of Shabbat, uh, animal uh, sacrifices, um, and they uh, considered their practices purer than those of the uh, Copts, and for instance, they didn't accept to eat with them. So really, they were apart. Uh, and they um, lived in uh, villages um, where only uh, better Israel uh, lived. S sometimes you may find also villages where there were also Christian, uh, but the majority, uh, they were the only inhabitants of some villages. Uh, the big change, the big change is with the arrival of Protestant missionaries. In uh, 1860, the London Society for Promoting Christianity among the Jews opened the first mission near Gonder. Gonder is, where, is not far from the uh, Tana Lake, the region that I showed you before. Um, and the, um, the missionaries um, continue their activity for more than a century. Um, but the, uh, the Protestant missionaries were obliged by the Ethiopian emperors to convert to Beth Israel to Coptic Christianity, not to Protestantism. Um, this, make, this started to make a big change because uh, um, many Beth Israel uh, uh, decided to convert because to convert um, was meaning also to receive education to have uh, the possibility to send children to school because there were no, no schools. Uh, and also um, to have uh, um, uh, the, for sanitary, uh, to have, have access to sort of uh, little hospitals. Um, so uh, to convert uh, um, meaning uh, was uh, uh, something uh, that gave uh, uh, advantages and also um, they could escape from the forced labor, as I told you, as a skilled uh, masons, um, and escaping from the stigma because uh, they were accused uh, to transform uh, in animals uh, and kill uh, children. So um, there were many, many advantages uh, in uh, conversion. And also the missionaries told them that there were no more Jews in the world. And they had no, they had no, uh, count, no, they were not in touch with uh, Jews before. So, uh, Protestants, uh, the, the, yes, the missionaries uh, told them, uh, you, you don't know because uh, you were uh, far away, but uh, uh, the Messiah is arrived. So, you were not informed, but the Messiah uh, arrived. So, it's, um, you need to convert. Uh, so you have uh, high rights of conversion. Uh, and the first reports of the missionary activity arrived in Europe and drew the attention of rabbis in Europe, starting from 1864. Because before, um, there was something, uh, um, something uh, uh, some better, uh, there are a few that arrived in Jerusalem. Um, there, there are uh, sources, uh, Hebrew sources that spoke of uh, some of them in Egypt, uh, but they, there was no attention uh, to them from um, Jews in Europe, not at all. But when the missionaries arrived and they started to write about the conversions, uh, this uh, the attention was um, uh, yes the the first uh, the rabbis in Europe um, paid attention to this phenomenon what was happening uh, in Ethiopia 
And you have the first Jewish mission sent to Ethiopia in 1867 by uh, Joseph Alevi, uh, who uh, he was in Ethiopia and uh, he met some of them, but not for a long time. Um, anyhow, um, when Alevi uh, came back, uh, he was a professor in uh, Paris. Uh, he knew the language, Amharic, and um, he, trained, he trained some students in Paris. And one of the students was Jack Feitlovich. He was a Halevi uh, pu uh, pupil student in Paris. And Feitlovich um, uh, decided to uh, go to Ethiopia to, um, uh, to, um, uh, to, to, to try to uh, uh, make difficult the life of the uh, missionaries. And, uh, to, um, and to be in touch with uh, the Bet Israel. So uh, the first uh, mission of Feitlovich was in 1904, and he stayed almost uh, less than one year, but many months. And, he, uh, and this was the first mission, but he went to Ethiopia many times, uh, and also for long periods. Um, uh, I, I wrote a book about Feitlovich uh, using the, uh, the Tel Aviv archive, as I told you, uh, because he's, a central, he's one of the central figures in, uh, in this story. Uh, but Feitlovich, um, uh, he tried to integrate Beta Israel to a European and Western Judaism. It was very different from uh, the, uh, the uses, the, the way they uh, practice uh, um, according to the Bible, as I told you. Um, so it was, uh, we, we can speak of a sort of conversion uh, to mainstream Judaism because this changed a lot. For instance, he was absolutely against the uh, sacrifice, sacrifice of animals and he um, tried to forbid uh, the, the use of the, the, this practice, for instance. Um, and he uh, started his, um, um, this, his activity with the Beta Israel, and um, we, can, uh, we can say that uh, it was uh, to, uh, to fight, to the work of Feitlovich, that uh, um, the Beta Israel uh, migrated to Israel um, in the two uh, very famous operations, Operation Moses in 84 and Operation Solomon in 1901. Uh, Feitlovich uh, is uh, this one, the man is here. Um, and he was born in Poland in watch in uh, 18, 1881 and he belonged to a very traditional Jewish family. He died in Tel Aviv in 1955. He was a pupil, a student of Alibi and his first travel was in 1904. And this is Tamrat. Tamrat, uh, he was born in Azazo. Uh, a village near Gonder, the same region that I showed before. Um, he died in Tel Aviv also, like Fetlovich, in 1963. Uh, and he was just uh, um, a, a little bit younger than Fetlovich, uh, seven years of difference. He was a son uh, we have different versions. According to, I think the the, the, the right one version. Uh, he was the son of a Coptic noble woman. So uh, the, uh, his mother was not a Falasha, was not a Beta Israel. Uh, or it was according to other uh, version, it was a converted fal uh, Falasha. But I think uh, according to the last uh, information, uh, I think his mother was Coptic, but his father was uh, a Falasha, was a Fanta Dawit, was uh, his name, who converted to Protestantism. So was one of the converts of the missionaries. 
And Tamrat, uh, he was in a Swedish uh, mission in Asmara when Faitlovich discovered him. And here you have uh, Tamrat, uh, his sister. Uh, and you see in the photos, he is always uh, in a sweet and tired boy tie. He adopted Italian, um, Italian uh, uh, dress, uh, Italian coats of dress, and also um, Italian uh, language and culture, because he stayed uh, many years in Italy, as we will, uh, we will see. So we have now two narratives. Uh, one is that of Jacques Feitlovich, that at the end he was a winner, um, a very important uh, protagonist of the story of the Beta Israel, and he is uh, well known until today. And the second is Tamrat, the loser, because today is an unknown fig figure, even uh, for the Jews of Ethiopia in Israel today. So this is uh, the, uh, the sense also of my talk uh, today. Um, Feitlovich, uh, mm, he thought that he should regenerate, he used uh, this uh, term, regenerate the Falashas, and it was a holy work uh, to accomplish. Um, he didn't accept uh, the, uh, the practices of the uh, Beth Israel. He, he wanted to change, to change, strongly to change. Um, so he addressed the main, uh, the main Jewish uh, transnational organizations and created pro falasha committees in Italy, Germany, US. And he was uh, very successful. He um, ha had a lot of links, important links, um, and he spent all his life um, traveling from uh, one uh, country to another one uh, to give um, talks about uh, the Palashas and to collect money, even if uh, he didn't collect so much money, but he was uh, all the time traveling and uh, um, making links. The Tamrat narrative, mm, he was a native found in a mission in Asmara, educated in Europe by uh, Faitlovic. And um, uh, Faitlovic uh, expected uh, uh, the um, uh, adoption of Judaism in uh, Euro European style, we can say. And uh, he um, wanted uh, the total dedication to the sacred cause. It was uh, Faitlovic called this uh, holy work or sacred cause. Um, that is to say the education of the Beta Israel. Uh, but this was at the expense of the uh, life uh, um, of Tamrat, his feelings, uh, his ambitions, uh, his beliefs. And uh, at the end, Tamrat finished in the folds of history, becoming a secondary figure. Tamrat Emanuel, uh, how to become a Western Jew? Uh, it's important the question of the name. Um, because in, uh, according to the system of names in Ethiopian culture, um, the name must be connected to the maternal line of descent. So uh, his name was Tamrat Dawit, because his father was Fant Dawit, and he was uh, Tamrat Dawit. Uh, but um, Faitlovich changed the names of all the students he took with him to Europe, and he gave a second name, a Jewish name, so Emmanuel. And he was known in the Jewish world as Emmanuel. Uh, so a sort of a new geneal genealogy uh, started with Faitlovich. And Faitlovich uh, used uh, to... Uh, he took, um, he brought 24 boys to Europe um, and he, um, the, the, he found um, um, through uh, families, uh, rabbis, uh, uh, Jewish organization, 
um, for instance, uh, uh, Alliance, uh, that is a very important French uh, um, organization, um, uh, Alliance Israelite Universal, Israelite Alliance. Um, so uh, also Tamrat went to Paris. He went to Paris with another uh, boy. Uh, so um, they were two and they arrived in Paris. Uh, in Paris, uh, um, he was at the uh, school of Alliance. Um, the other boy was Getty uh, Irmiao. Also the second name was a Jewish name, was not his, um, the name of his father, as I told you. And um, uh, Alliance was not really, Alliance was, is a very important organization for education, um, for education of Jews in the Arab world, for instance. Uh, but Alliance uh, didn't, um, didn't think that they were real Jews. Uh, so they didn't accept, uh, uh, and they didn't, because Feitrovich, uh, at the beginning thought that Alliance could open a school in Ethiopia, like in Morocco, in Iraq, in Yemen, many other countries. But Alliance didn't want because um, at the end they thought um, they are black, they, are, they can't be Jews. Um, and uh, when they, uh, the two boys arrived in Paris, I have a quote here, from Alliance, uh, the two young men are about 20. They speak only Ethiopian and Amharic. We didn't know what to do with them when they arrived in Paris. Although they have skin, uh, they don't, um, black skin, they don't have the flat face that is typical of the African Negro. So um, Alliance uh, was obliged to accept the two boys in the school but they, uh, they didn't, uh, really, they didn't want them and they uh, didn't understand, um, they, they didn't think at the end uh, that they were Jews. This was the, the, big, the big problem. And this is another quote of Alliance. Uh, to everyone's great surprise, Feitlovich brought with him two falashes who wandered around the street of Paris uh, for a few weeks. The Alliance was forced in some way to accept them at the Ecole Normale d'Hôtel. These young men had barely begun to lose some of their ignorant ways when Feitlovich sent them away uh, from the school to Florence. So uh, this is uh, um, just an example um, to, um, to give for the attitude of, of Alliance. And, um, uh, Tamrat, so Fatlovich took them from Alliance and sent them to Florence. Why to Florence? Because in Florence there was a rabbi, uh, Margulies, uh, who was very interested in this project of education. Uh, of, uh, he thought that they were Jews and uh, he was interested to do something for them. So Tamrat arrived in Florence. Uh, but he stayed um, a long time because of the First World War. So um, uh, according to the um, project of Feitlovich, uh, he should uh, have to stay just uh, a few years, but he stayed until uh, 1920. This is why he got a very strong, uh, was very influenced by Italian language, Italian culture. Italian ideas, um, and it was before the rise of fascism. So it was a period uh, in which uh, in Italy uh, there was, uh, I, um, the ideals was about freedom and um, uh, also socialist ideas, and, uh, um, but not uh, fascism was not, um, not, not didn't uh, er arise at that period. Um, and this is a quote from Tamrat to the Italian consul in Aden in 37. So we have, here is after the invasion of um, Ethiopia from Italy, because Italy uh, conquered Ethiopia in 36. 
And uh, Tamra say, I was young when I went to Italy, where I was taught about the democratic systems and learned to detest both Caesar and Napoleon. I have read and admire your Mazzini. Mazzini was uh, the leader uh, of the, the, the creator of the Italian uh, unity, also Italian nation. Um, uh, so he had a, a very good knowledge of Italian and he used this language. Uh, as I told you, most of his letters were in Italian. And he was uh, trained to become a rabbi because Faitlovich uh, thought he, uh, he should be um, a sort of rabbi. So he received um, uh, Masculine so uh, something uh, different um, uh, steps uh, to become rabbi. And here you have Tamrat in Florence, Faitlovich, and um, Getir Miao, the second, the other boy. And here is a, um, the declaration of the degree he got from uh, the rabbi in Florence. Um, in Italy, uh, he, uh, uh, so this is uh, interesting because uh, when uh, um, Tamrat arrived in the US, as I will tell you after, and uh, when he was in the US, uh, there was an American philanthropist, Lillian Cavi, um, that he accompanied, he, because he, she spoke Italian, so she was a translator during his trip. But later on, he wrote in uh, 1960 uh, that he, um, that um, Tamrat uh, spoke about uh, an Italian girl mm -hmm. that uh, was his love. Uh, and uh, she, she wrote while studying in Italy, he and the young Italian Jewess fell, um, uh, fell very much in love. She wanted him to marry her, but his de decision was one of self-sacrifice. But, but I discovered that it was, she was not an Italian Jewess. Uh, she was an Italian anarchist, uh, Lida Raffanelli, and she was not Jewish. And uh, even she converted to Islam. So it was not really what the American philanthropist thought. She, this is, uh, she is Leda, Leda Raffanelli. Um, Tamrat met her in 1917 in the house of the lawyer Raffaello Tolenghi, an Italian Jew and a socialist leader. Uh, Raffaele uh, Tolenghi is very important figure for Tamrat. Um, he was part of the Pro Falascia Committee because in Florence, in uh, um, 907, uh, the rabbi Margulies found uh, with Faitlovich the first pro Falasha committee. Uh, and Otto Lenghi was an important member of this uh, committee. Here we have always Lida Raffanelli, so the thumb fatal. See? And Raffaele Otto Lenghi was uh, the treasurer of the pro Falasha committee. And um, Otto Lenghi was uh, uh, a political uh, uh, was a, a political leader and a socialist Italian political leader, and also um, a benefactor because uh, he left uh, he died and he left uh, an inheritance to Tamrat, and Raffaello Otto Lenghi completely disagreed with Faitlovich about the future of Tamrat because uh, he uh, thought that Tamrat uh, um, was, um, uh, he didn't think that to become rabbi or school teacher was uh, uh, something good for uh, Tamrat. Um, here just to mention uh, some important figures for Tamrat, Rabbi Margulies, Giuseppe Levi uh, was a close friend of uh, Tamrat, so was a, an Italian, uh, Italian Jewish uh, uh, milieu. Uh, that uh, um, Tamrat, um, when uh, he's uh, at the end of his life, when he was in Jerusalem, uh, he um, was all the time with uh, uh, these, these families, these Italian Jewish families that emigrated to Israel, so very close to them. 
Um, the letter uh, written by Tamarat to Faitlovich during this period reflect the sense of independence and autonomous decision that represented a major change. So when he was in Italy, he changed his mind. He, uh, he was interested by culture, by uh, European culture, by um, also he fell in love with uh, um, a woman. So it was, uh, he, didn't, uh, he didn't want to come back to Ethiopia at the end. Uh, he tried to find a job, uh, he tried to be independent and, uh, but, uh, and expressed very, in the letters very strong feelings of rebellions against Faitlovich. Uh, but, but Faitlovich didn't accept this change. And uh, for instance, I quote a letter from Faitlovich, uh, no, from Tamrat to Faitlovich. I lack the animating force, per perhaps also the faith, to follow in your giant footsteps. It seems beyond my forces to undertake the affairs of the Falashes. So this is uh, 1918. Um, and later on, he uh, wrote, I prefer to devote myself to literature for my brethren and lead a life of Bohemian. Thank you for all you have done for me from my childhood. Now, heart and mind order me imperiously to no longer correspond. So this was in uh, when uh, in, in 36, we will uh, see what yeah. happened. Uh, but uh, there was no way to escape and Tamrat was forced to come back to Ethiopia. Um, he was obliged to leave uh, Leda Raffanelli um, and uh, he uh, became the director of the school, Faitlovich School in Addis Abeba. So a school created for the um, young boys, uh, Falasha boys, who arrived uh, from, um, from the north. Uh, they had to, um, to walk 40 days uh, through Ethiopia to arrive to Addis Abeba. And um, uh, Faitlovich decided that the school uh, should be in Addis Abeba and not in Gondar, not where the uh, Falashas uh, uh, were living. As I told you, Tamrat was also in New York in 1931-32, uh, uh, because um, Faitrovich thought that in order to convince American Jews to finance the American pro Committee, uh, it was good to, um, to meet uh, directly uh, Tamrat. Um, and here is a, a, a quote uh, from, a, a from a journal, an Abyssinian student, the first Jew from that country to step on American soil was present and spoke to the guests. His speech, all in Italian, was translated by Miss Kavovitz, the same lady that I quoted before, the only woman present who could speak Italian. He studied English at Columbia for a few months. Uh, here you have uh, uh, from uh, the newspapers, Master the Falacious Parish. So it was all this. Uh, this was the school, the Disabeba school. Um, so there was a, a lot of um, publication at the time. And uh, here you have also, uh, this is Tamrat in uh, New York, this one. Um, and uh, he, um, he was in Harlem. He visited two times the commandment keepers of the Royal Order of Ethiopian Hebrews, led by Matthews and later joined by Ford. And Tamrat had his speech during his second visit at the congregation in French. Uh, he knew very well French, uh, too. Uh, and here uh, what we read, uh, he gave a speech in French, a man of medium stature with a beautiful birth arrived, arrived at 8.50 p.m. The congregation stood in his honor and the current led strain Ethiopia, the land of our fathers. So this is uh, the 
the quote, the original source. Um, and Tamrat, as I told you, um, came back to Ethiopia and he was a director of the school in Addis from 1923 to 37. And he was a guide to Carlo Alberto Viterbo, the Italian Jew that I mentioned at the beginning, um, that arrived, this one, this one is Carlo Alberto Viterbo, the man in the middle. Um, and Carlo Alberto Viterbo arrived uh, after uh, the, uh, after Ita um, the um, uh, Italian, uh, um, Italian conquer, uh, it conquered Ethiopia uh, just a few months uh, after um, uh, the, the, the uh, yes, the fall of Addis Abeba in Italian hands. Uh, and, uh, and he was uh, uh, sent by the um, organization of the Jews, of the Italian Jews, to, um, in order to um, be in touch with the Falashes and also with uh, Jews in Ethiopia, because in, in Addis Ababa, uh, there were also Jews from different countries and also from Aden, Yemenite Jews, for instance. So in order to create a new um, a sort of a new Jewish community in Ethiopia. Um, and uh, this is a letter when uh, uh, that, uh, that Tamrat wrote to Feitlovich when he started his trip with uh, um, Carlo Alberto Viterbo uh, to Gondar. So um, Carlo Alberto Viterbo stayed a few months in Addis Abeba, in the school, and after they went together to, um, to meet the Falashes of the villages in, the, in their area, uh, the, the one I showed it I showed at the beginning. So Gondar and uh, around the lake of Tana and the mountains of Semien. Um, and this, uh, during this trip that, um, was a, a long, they stayed um, many months uh, in, um, in the Falasha regions. Um, and it was by chance. Uh, and um, Tamrat um, wrote after that Viterbo saved his life because uh, in 37, there was an um, assassination attempt to Generale Graziani, the Italia, Italian governor of Ethiopia. Um, and uh, 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 Tamrat was together with Viterbo, so he was not in Addis uh, when this happened. And um, after, um, after that uh, event, Graziani uh, tried to eliminate the whole, the whole Ethiopian uh, elite, intellectuals, priests, monks. Uh, and uh, Tamrat's life, life was uh, at risk. Uh, and uh, he knew uh, from uh, someone from the school, uh, wrote letters, uh, don't come back to Addis, uh, stay away, uh, leave, leave Ethiopia. Um, uh, the situation is very, uh, very difficult. And uh, don't, don't come back. Uh, so um, he understood the situation and left uh, Ethiopia, uh, first to Aden and after to Egypt. So he was a refugee in Egypt. Um, and uh, he, um, in Egypt, he was uh, um, with the um, work with the resistance, Ethiopian resistance against the Italians. Uh, he was a, a very strong anti-fascist um, and against Italian colonization. Uh, here is a quote. Uh, he, this was an article he wrote very early in 27 against the Mussolini. Mm -hmm. um, he wrote, Italian people appreciate and respect freedom very much, but as we know Italy, we are amazed to see a dictator to rule over these people safely. 
So this was written in 27. And uh, in uh, uh, 10 years later, when he met the Italian consul in Aden, uh, when he was uh, uh, escaping from Egypt, he told him, tell me why you have come to Abyssinia to make, to make us happy? What are you doing in Spain? You have massacred us because we are barbarians. And who are the barbarians in Spain? The Franco-Anglo-Russians or you and Hitler with your regimes? So you see, he spoke very clearly and he, uh, he was very engaged, uh, very engaged with uh, um, the Ethiopian, um, Ethiopian uh, resistance. Uh, so um, uh, Faitlovich was not happy at all because Faitlovic uh, refused that Tamrat could have a political agenda. And so these are just uh, a few quotes from Faitlovich, your foolishness has caused me to become indisposed and stay in bed for a few days. Despite this carelessness, uh, carelessness, I won't dismiss you for the moment. Priority to the holy work. So Faitlovich didn't accept uh, that he could uh, be a part of the Ethiopians against, against Italian colonialism. Uh, so Tamrat was very, very close. He was Ethiopian. He was uh, interested to, um, uh, to the freedom of Ethiopia. Uh, he was very close to the emperor of uh, Ethiopia, Elias Elassie. Um, so he helped Elias Elassie to uh, come back. Um, he was with him when uh, uh, they, uh, he moved to Addis uh, in, the, in, in uh, 1940. Uh, he had no illusions about the Italian fascist regime. Um, and uh, at the beginning, uh, when the Italian uh, arrived in Addis, uh, uh, he wrote, who knows how long this kindness will last, because they presented uh, at the beginning as uh, kind people. Uh, so he participated in the Ethiopian resistance against Italy while in Egypt. And in uh, uh, 1940, he chose to help Aile Selassie to come back to Ethiopia and left to Sudan with other members of the resistance against the Italians, refusing the permit to entry into Palestine because Faitlovich uh, at that time uh, succeeded in obtaining a visa uh, for Tamrat to go to Palestine. Um, Faitlovich was, uh, was in Tel Aviv at that time. Um, and for instance, after the racial, um, in, in Italy, um, um, there was the racial laws against Jews in uh, 1938. And he wrote to Viterbo, reminding him that in the end, the facts proved that he was right. He uh, is Tamra. Tamra was right. Fascism uh, should have been condemned and fought from the beginning. This is quote is because Italian Jews, um, uh, most, most, the majority of Italian Jews at the beginning, uh, didn't understand um, the risk of uh, the risk of fascism and supported re the regime, and Tamrat uh, disagreed. He understood uh, at once, uh, very very early, the uh, what could happen uh, supporting uh, Mussolini and fascism. And he, um, after Appunto, he, he wrote, uh, he observed that the Jews in Italy were making the experience of moments of trial when very few are prepared to the battle. This is in 39. He knew very well Italian uh, uh, Jews and Italian Judaism. After the Second World War, he was a uh, um, cultural attaché in the Ethiopian legation in Paris. So he was, um, uh, Aile Selassie named him as cultural attaché. Uh, so a very important position. After that, he was in Asmara as advisor of the emperor Haile Selassie, but it was too independent, too critic 
towards the corruption and the politics of Haile Selassie. So uh, he was uh, exiled by uh, the emperor in Jerusalem. Um, in Jerusalem, um, there is a, 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 there are in the uh, the church, the Christian church. One part of the church is um, part of Ethiopians, of Ethiopian Copts, and you have um, in uh, in Jerusalem you have. Uh, a story of the um, uh, Ethiopians uh, that live in Jerusalem uh, from uh, many, from very very long time. So he was uh, he was there in Jerusalem, and he was uh, um, contrary to the mass immigration of Falashas to Israel. Uh, this was the idea of Feitlovich, but he thought that if the Falashas arrived in Israel without sufficient preparation they would become a schnorrer. Schnorrer means uh, um, uh, beggars. Uh, it's a, a Yiddish uh, term, and he used uh, this term that is a very strong term for uh, Jews. And here there was an article, a Hebrew, in, in uh, the main uh, newspaper, Aretz, in uh, uh, 56. Um, uh, the first one, uh, Tamrat, uh, Mispar, uh, Mispar Echad, uh, the first one. So the first, uh, the most important. But uh, in reality, he was marginalized. Uh, Faitrovich didn't uh, acknowledge uh, the help he received from Tamrat because Faitlovich was appointed general inspector for the Minister of Education in Addis in 1942. Uh, from uh, Tel Aviv, he moved to Ethiopia thanks to Tamrat. Uh, and he was named by Ale um, Selassie as cultural attaché for Ethiopia and Egypt in 44 mm -hmm. 45, so uh, at the end of the war. Um, and uh, Fedrovich uh, kept uh, the attitude of the European master who expects, expects to be honored and obeyed by, by his pupils. So there was uh, an asymmetrical relationship between the two, uh, which deteriorated over the years. So uh, Tamrat was um, very sad at the end of his life. He finally, he he submitted. Uh, he has been the obedient guide of Faitlovich. Uh, he was a buyer of important manuscripts for Faitlovich and the copist of Ethiopian manuscripts for Faitlovich. Uh, he was obliged to accept all of the decisions taken by his master and to be burdened by, with the holy project without the right to criti criticize it. He was also the reluctant director of the Faitlovich school in Addis Ababa because the school had no means. So Faitlovich suffered a lot because he couldn't do nothing with no means. Um, he died in Tel Aviv eight years after Faitlovich. Um, so uh, Tamrat tried to oppose and resist to his master choosing to fight Italian fascism, not to give up his own political ideas, choosing Ethiopia and his independence when he was a refugee in Egypt instead of immigrating to Palestine, choosing to be cultural attaché of Ethiopia instead of immigrating to Israel, choosing to express himself freely with the emperor against corruption and accepting exile. Um, so he was, uh, um, uh, he couldn't follow the path of independence that followed, uh, that Otto Lenghi proposed, uh, the treasurer of Italian Profalascia Committee. Uh, he submitted to Fetrovich's will, uh, but kept the independence of his ideas and felt free to use irony and sarcasm against his master. As Viterbo wrote in his obituary, his spirit was troubled and looked beyond the school when he was director of the school. Here is a tombstone. And it's interesting because uh, he has no place in public memory. 
Uh, I gave a talk in Babylon University in 2003, and I addressed a talk to Ethiopian Jewish students about Tamrat that arose a big interest among them, but also showed that Tamrat, so an important representative of Ethiopian Jewry, was totally unknown among Ethiopian students, while Jacques Feitlovich was well known. And in Israel, Israeli public space on the wall of the new Ethiopian synagogue in Lod, there is a portrait of Feitlovich together with current Ethiopian Jewish leaders, but no photo of Tamrat. So this is not uh, something strange, it's a common pattern because uh, um, you, I, I may uh, mention uh, um, generally, um, there are many cases of European Jews accompanied by a native Jew with no memory of the native uh, Abi Serur accompanied by Charles de Foucault in the south of Morocco, but uh, everybody knows about uh, Charles de Foucault and not about Abi Serur. Mordechai Cohen accompanied Nahum Schlutz in Libya, it's the same case. Habshush accompanied Yosef Alevi in Yemen and it's the same, the same pattern you may found. So this is a sort of tribute. Uh, in conclusion, I try to contribute to the establishment of the memory of an important intellectual of the Beth Israel uh, who has been, uh, has been forgotten. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much, uh, Emanuela. That was really, um, uh, a lot of information and good information. We really appreciate that. Uh, if you joined us um, in the middle, or if you just joined us, uh, this is the Before Slavery Museum webinar series, and our guest today is Dr. Emanuela Travesson, and uh, she just shared with us some information about uh, Beta Israel in Ethiopia, uh, formerly known as Abyssinia. <laughs> um, so it, uh, well, just a little bit about the museum uh, we will be opening doors on the museum this year in October in the metro Atlanta area you will be hearing lots about that um, and of course we also will have in-house programs for uh, people here in, in the metro Atlanta area ongoing programs um, but the museum will also welcome people from around the world to come and learn about the pre-slavery, pre-colonial history. Um, special thanks to our sponsors, Cobb EMC Foundation, Ruby's Africa, Packed with a Purpose, Black Butterfly um, uh, 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 ebook, excuse me, and I will share with you a little bit about Ruby's Africa right now. All righty. Download on App Store or Play Store today. All right, that's Ruby's Africa. It is um, stories for children. And if you know a young person, okay, if you if you have a, a child, grandchild, niece and nephew, or some other young person that you care about. Um, take a second right now and put in your email address. Usually we do a little drawing for this, but today we're going to do it a little differently. Just put your email address in the chat right now and the age of the child that you would give this to. And we will, uh, the first person to do it will get a free month subscription to Ruby's Africa. So just take a moment right now, whoever gets their email address in there and the age of a child that they would give this to in the chat, then you will receive 30-day free subscription to uh, Af 
African stories written for children. As you could tell from the uh, little promo there, it is um, well illustrated, very nice. And also, if you have a question for Dr. Trevisan, now is a good time to put your questions in the chat. Okay, so my next question for you, Dr. Trevisan, is um, what about, <clears throat> what about, uh, very good, we have a winner, Allison Taylor. Yay, Allison, you, I will email you the code uh, so that you can um, uh, download the app and your child, niece, nephew, grandchild, or other loved, beloved young person can watch these, uh, age 11, very good, well, can watch these videos and enjoy the stories. Okay, and then one other thing, you still have time, you're welcome, you're welcome, Allison. We still have time to put a question in if you want. So the last uh, webinar that we had, uh, we, we, um, uh, each time we have a webinar, we invite people to please answer the survey at the end of the webinar. And that way we know the materials that you want to hear about, you want to see, and we get feedback on our webinars so that we can get better or um, just even to continue to encourage. Uh, so the person who, these are the people who filled out the survey last time, and we're going to Whoever gets pulled out of here today will receive a free Before Slavery t-shirt. All right. And the winner is Ms. Pruitt. <laughs> All right, Ms. Pruitt. And you will receive an email from us to get your mailing address and we will ship a Before Slavery t-shirt to you. All right, Dr. Travisan, what about groups that may have, uh, we, we learned that the Beta Israel um, uh, have a few, uh, you shared with us a few different ways that, uh, that they share their origin stories. Do we know of any groups that may have splintered off from them or migrated um, maybe to Sudan, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, any of the surrounding areas? Uh, no, to Sudan, yes. Uh, you have groups uh, who, who went to Sudan, but the idea was uh, to, um, to arrive uh, to Jerusalem because uh, the um, Jerusalem was very important, uh, um, and it, it, they they had always the idea that one day they could uh, come back to Jerusalem. So mm -hmm. they they tried uh, uh, once. Uh, they but they, they went through Sudan, and uh, was, uh, a lot of them died uh, because of loss of food and of. Uh, uh, illness uh, and um, in um, in the 70s you in the 70s, you have some uh, groups who tried to uh, to arrive to Jerusalem through Sudan and in the 80s uh, they were um, they uh, they it was a, in the 80s it was terrible because uh, uh, 4,000 uh, uh, Beta Israel died in, uh, in Sudan. In the camps, uh, uh, died of uh, lack of food and, mal and uh, sickness. Uh, ch children and uh, old people uh, died uh, with the idea to, to come back to Jerusalem. So it was um, a terrible uh, story. So, um, yes, um, I know this, yeah, through Sudan and... Uh, okay, 
All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, Dr. Tre uh, Trevisan. Thank you so much for um, coming and joining us today. I really enjoyed it. I know our audience did too. And hopefully we were taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you to you and uh, uh, I wish you <laughs> uh, success for your work, your museum. Thank you. Thank you. And, and when the pandemic is over, we would welcome you with open arms. It would be wonderful <laughs> to have you come and visit. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will let you know the next upcoming webinar uh, for February. I uh, just need to solidify one more thing before I start promoting it, but you will get an invitation. All the best to you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.